to, and willingness to do all these talks. Um, we, had, we had looked at, um, at containers uh, that, that Luca had talked about, and uh, uh, Stephen's going to talk a little bit about you know, some other sides to security and hardening in OpenWRT and you know, kind of what's being done right now. So, Stephen. Thanks. So, uh, I'm sorry, one last time you have to hear my voice here on stage. But I'll, I'll keep it uh, short this time. It's just uh, three or four slides. So, um, uh, a little about uh, new security features in Chaos Karma. Uh, we now have uh, package signing, which is uh, kind of like a first for us because there was some initial work on package signing done in earlier releases already, but it relied on the uh, GNU PG support in the OPKG package manager which uh, we didn't really use. It was there if you compiled your own stuff, you could use it, but nobody in practice really did. And uh, Felix used the opportunity to um, use one of uh, Bernstein's uh, implementations of the Curve 25519 thing and build a, a package uh, list signing tool of it based on this uh, EDDSA algorithm. So um, this is now new in the release. And um, what we also have now is uh, file system jails and uh, seccom support. This was done by John and, and Felix as well. This is uh, support in our, from our or in our proc D init replacement, in, in which you can actually define um, whitelists for uh, processes for which files they can access and all the rest they can't access. And also, this uh, includes like services that can be called by this um, daemon. And you see an example here. You can, um, in a usual procd enabled init script, you can just define procd at jail and add a list of services. There are like other commands. You can find it, for example, in the DNS mask um, init script, where you can see how you can add um, files to this jail. And if you enable this jailing feature, then basically the process cannot access anything outside of the jail. This is done by some combination of uh, bound, uh, sorry, bind, uh, mount binds and uh, moving the actual process using pivot root into a uh, uh, tempfs file system. So, and then there's also seccomp support. You, you might have heard of seccomp, it's a way to uh, restrict the process in uh, the amount of system calls it can do, or rather not the amount, but the actual um, system calls it can call. So uh, in a similar manner to uh, like you've seen here, you can write a list in a, a JSON-like format which in which you can whitelist all the uh, syscalls that your uh, process is uh, should be able to call and um, give it to procd and procd will then uh, use the kernel seccom feature to restrict the process to only be able to call those syscalls. So if you uh, do this for all of your processes, this gets you also uh, a higher level of security and might be an alternative to uh, real containers in certain use cases. And um, what are we currently working on in designated driver, which is, by the way, the first um, release which will be uh, named after a non-alcoholic cocktail. So. <laughs> So w we can blame it. We are trying to be safe here and uh, do something for security. So uh, what we have here is um, some build system hardening. We were lacking uh, behind on this uh, compared to other distributions, really. So what we now do is uh, enable by default is uh, checking of format security for all our packages that we compile. We uh, added user space and kernel space stack smashing protection by default now. So um, this uh, wasn't there yet, but it's, it will be available in the next release. And if you use trunk, then it's already there. Um, in the same uh, way, we're using uh, source fortification, which you know usually know by parsing fortify source. Uh, there's a specific implementation we're using for this, which is also used by Alpine Linux, which is also another uh, distribution which focuses on security. So, and on top of that, we also use uh, the railroad um, linker optimizations or linker flags, which use immediate binding. And by that, you can uh, protect some attacks based on uh, overriding or overflow of elf sections or the global offset table. 
So um, this is now there and um, we still have some work to do on that, but let me focus on another thing first. There's an initiative uh, based uh, or started on top of some Debian projects for reproducible builds. So um, the idea is if you have um, a specific uh, commit, for example, or source version, you want to be able to have the same result uh, in the binary that you get out of the source, independent of where you or when you build it. And this is might sound trivial, but in, in reality it actually isn't, because there's, for example, some uh, packaging tool just throws in a timestamp there, and this just uh, uh, changes your build every time. Or there's some um, pseudo randomness in some ordering somewhere, for example, in the packaging, or depending on some host version of a tool you have. So this is really some effort that's going into there. It's actually done by this uh, Debian project for some part. So we're really grateful about that. And um, we hope we can uh, have reproducible builds in the future then. And yeah, talking about other things, um, you might have seen we switched away from uh, UC libc, which uh, was the C library that we've been using, or at least for most um, platforms we are now switching away, um, aside for I think MIPS64, which is not yet supported by um, Muscle. And uh, we're choosing Muscle now because it uh, has actually active releases and it has a very clean and robust code base. If you compare it to UCLibc, uh, there haven't been any releases for, I don't know, two or three years actually. So uh, we don't consider it a very uh, good choice for a clean and uh, security enabled system anymore. So we've been replacing it with Muscle now. And uh, another news, uh, Telnet be gone. Uh, you might have seen if you flash uh, um, a default OpenWT build or do a factory reset, there's some Telnet uh, thingy which you can access until you've set a password and it was automatically disabled. We got rid of that now. Um, you can now use SSH from the start in trunk. And there, so we don't use a default password there, but uh, you can still utilize SSH without a password until you actually set one for the root account. That is new. And uh, Joe has been working on um, uh, improving our communication uh, with regards to security announcement when we um, update packages due to uh, uh, CVE or similar, then um, there's now more or less semi-automated way to send some announcement to the mailing list or so. So we're still working on, on, on that, but I hope we get some improvements out of that. So uh, to do on this matter, um, on the hardening part, there's one big thing that's missing for um, full address space layout randomization. We need to build our, all our executables as a position independent uh, code. So at the moment only the libraries are built like that because libraries are usually relocatable. So, um, but on, on Linux, uh, the executables aren't, so they are uh, mostly loaded into fixed addresses. So we have to get this in, but it's a bit tricky and cumbersome. You don't want to do it for every package, so you have to uh, add it to the tool chain in some way. And because you have to differentiate between libraries where you use the normal position independent code, like uh, you pass the fpick, and for uh, executables you have to pass PIE, so position independent executable, and as most uh, package build systems don't differentiate, they just have a rule for, I don't know, this, is, uh, this C file is translated into an O file independent if it's a library or not, and because we now have to differentiate in those flags, we uh, have to be careful and it's probably going to take some hacking into GCC or so, which is a bit troublesome. It's somewhere on my to-do list actually, but I don't know when I'll find the time. Why, why is that necessary? What's, your, what's pushing for that, having a position independent executable? Well, um, the thing is, uh, if, if you have actually an exploit in one of your, uh, so, so take this with a grain of salt, I'm not that much of a security guy, so, but I'll try to, um, so, if you, if you have an exploit and most of the uh, exploits rely on that you can 
like call some functions anywhere or assemble your exploit code from some code anywhere. And the point of address-based layout randomization is that your the code or the functions aren't at fixed positions in the code. So they the libraries and so on, the code is moved around randomly at, at startup and um, for I mean, for libraries, that is always done because libraries are relocatable code, but at the moment, um, the binaries or the executables aren't relocatable code, so they can't be, and they have fixed addresses. So this is to get rid of that. And yeah, more on the to-do, um, actually utilize the new features that were added to PROCD, like the jailing function, the seccom function, they're mostly now enabled for, I don't know, one or two example services, but for them really to be effective, we have to um, add support for our own um, daemons and see which syscalls do they need, which files do they need to access, and we need to uh, uh, create those white lists and add them to the init scripts. And of course, in general, um, yeah, more privilege dropping. There's still uh, some central daemons that run as root by default. Some sort of have to, but we should try to find a way also for, for example, the UBUS system to um, deal better without having root access. And I think that's also being worked on or is already partly in there. So thanks again. That's it for me.